All right, we are ready to talk horse racing once again on our Horsepower PSN YouTube channel with Chad Summers still on hiatus, and that's for a good thing because he's training Clapton on, which will be Saturday our time. Is it still Saturday your time, uh, Chad? Yeah, 6.20 p.m. 6.20 p.m., Chad's time. And uh, that means it's, uh, what is that, nine hours earlier. So what does that make it for us? 9.20 on the East Coast. 9.20 on the East Coast. So that's uh, three hours earlier than last week. So just keep that in mind. Uh, John, how's everything going? 4.20 a.m. in Hawaii for those keeping for our fans in Hawaii. (laughs) Yeah, we won't be doing that. Especially for, they're they're too close to Santa Anita. They're on our uh, bad side. Because they won't be racing until what, Sunday now? Monday, yes, John? Early, Saturday's caught on Sunday. Sunday's caught on Monday. <clears throat> uh, and the one of the potential favorites who is not eligible right now, Nisos, is racing in the San yeah, Felipe. He's getting no points for winning. So what's the point? Who cares? I mean, that's Churchill is stupid. So. And there's only five horses in that race. And two of them are Baffert. That's correct. Tremendous. What a beautiful, beautiful racetrack. And it is. It's unfortunate the people are running it. Okay, so uh, let's wrap up what happened last week. So uh, John once again uh, hit uh, another exacta in race number 10. And um, Chad came back to hit the exacta in race 11. So uh, we did really well again last week. And, of course, the big one was the Rebel Stakes. So what did you guys think about the Rebel Stakes um, and uh, the performance overall? Uh, Another three-year-old prep race. Well, Cox had the horse ready. He was off the layoff. The question is if he was going to be squeezed. I don't know. He got a good trip, and uh, he, <coughs> excuse me, he did what he had to do. So, you know, I wouldn't take anything away from it. I'm sure he'll move forward off of that race. Yeah, Chad, uh, someone pointed out uh, that you had the uh, – they were uh, they were concerned that you may not be on the show this week, actually. Um, Martin Paul said, so I guess we won't be seeing Chad anymore on the shows. Uh, qu- uh, I guess he's quoting or paraphrasing. If Timberlake isn't one, two, three early, I quit. Still love you, Chad. Three in a row for John. He's on fire lately. That's Martin Paul. Um, so uh, were you surprised that, I guess you were, that Timberlake was not one, two, three early and he still gets the victory? I think it's a difference in running style between Christian Torres and Florent Giroux. Florent Giroux is a... Uh, <laughs> A much more, more aggressive, aggressive, out of the gate. Uh, aggressive rider out of the gate, as we saw him put Saudi Crown on the lead halfway around the world in Saudi Arabia. So, I mean, I'll, I'll take partial credit, but I was I was wrong. And uh, Timberlake was able to get a lot of um, experience in the race. I mean, uh, maybe look, you're still learning. He had some a good foundation of races as a two year old, but it's always good to keep uh, you know facing some adversity, which he did. I thought Christian gave him a Gave him a great ride, and in talking to uh, Jockey Florent Giroux, uh, actually tonight, um, we'll have some breaking news on this show. Florent Giroux will be coming to Dubai uh, to ride Saudi Crown in the Godolphin Mile on March 30th, which means that if Timberlake, as is expected right now, runs in the uh, Arkansas Derby, it will be Christian Torres back aboard, and Florent Giroux will not be riding him. Florentra will be in Dubai. So uh, some breaking news here from afar in the desert of uh, of Christian Torres. It might be breaking news for Christian Torres. He might not know that he has the amount yet uh, back on, on March 30th. So, look, he's, he's, a, he's a rising star. He rode Clapton for me. It was his first graded stakes victory um, back in September. And, and I think he deserves the accolades. Look, I think he's 16 in front of the Oakland standings right now. And he's uh, he's a young kid who who just continues to keep his head down and and work his work his butt off. So you know, happy for the opportunity for him. With Timberlake, the questions still remain for me. Um, if he really truly wants to go a mile and a quarter, um, I would plug him in as the as the favorite in the Pat Day Mile over Bookham Dano. Um, but obviously, with the Derby getting the the purse hike this year to five million dollars, along with the accolades of what the Kentucky Derby is, I would solely expect to see Timberlake continue to be on the Derby trail. Um, but when we talked last week or whatever week it was, Greg, about, you know, kind of that Derby future pool, to me, 
Sierra Timberlake didn't run well enough in that race to eclipse Sierra Leone. So Sierra Leone oh, remains yeah. the uh, leader in the clubhouse, uh, as you were. But uh, my one-two horses both run this weekend, so we'll see what happens. Long way to go. A lot could happen between now and then. So let's see what but happens. My top, my top two Derby contenders are both run in action this weekend. Oh, all right. right. So, so I can claim number Victor. Horse, my number two horse is uh, the Brad Cox horse that runs in the Gotham. One of the four Brad Cox horses in the Gotham, in just away. And my just number one touch. horse, just a touch. And my one number one horse, a claim Victor, is running in a maiden race at Gulfstream. What race is that? How's he getting points Third. if he's only in a maiden race? Well, I guess he has time. Who trains him? Todd Pletcher. He's run huh. one time in his life and finished second. And he'll he'll be the set. He'll, he won't even be the favorite in the maiden race. His stable mate will be favored over him. <laughs> oh, locked, yeah. No, not so, locked. This is uh, BU will be the in the maiden oh, race. Uh, okay. So a claim Victor. Well, what race is it? Howard Wallowitz. What's that? What race? I think it's the third he, race. He's in that race. Yeah, it's a loaded race. Wow. And Jose's horse ran really well last. Well, he Big City got an 89 buyer and Jefferson Street's in the race. A well thought of uh, Godolphin he horse got, for he got uh, a Bill 10 on the sheet. He got a 10 on the sheets. So how yeah, are we that doing? Is, that is the, uh, the, the probably the most loaded maiden race of the year uh, <laughs> on Saturday at Gulfstream. Okay. And that, yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, matter of fact, I've, yeah, I have the, uh, I'm keeping that box open. Hopefully we'll get the odds before we're done here. But, um, the odds are that we won't have the odds. Yeah. Well, they we'll, like that for a tongue twister. Yeah. And, and, and if we don't get the odds in time, we'll, uh, John and I will, uh, do the, the race a little bit later on. So it will be edited into this video a little bit later. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So I'm just taking a look at it right now. There it is. Race number three, uh, at Gulfstream Park. And I don't see him in there. It's not, it's not three. <laughs> It's three, isn't it three? It could be two. I think it's three. Acclaim victory. Oh, there it is. Race number two. Thank mm. you. Okay, race number two, uh, and that is yeah. So there you go. The seven for a long race. Acclaim victor is number six. All right. So there you go. Uh, all right. So that's uh, so no other horses uh, uh, impress you guys uh, in that uh, rubble. Not really. Okay. And. Um, Let's uh, also, uh, while we're at it, let's uh, update a few other of the viewers that uh, wanted to chime in. Um, Sigma Mendoza, greetings, Chad. I saw the Kentucky Oaks nominations and saw Amor Fadi not on the list. What Amor is the Forte. Why did you change her name to Fadi? Go ahead. A M O R F A T I. Amor Fate. Fate. Okay. Yes. What is the plan for the Philly? Will she be late nominated and maybe run in a points race uh, after uh, first running in an allowance? Thank you, and best of luck with Clapton this weekend. Yeah, look, I mean, she ran very, very hard and very, very fast in that uh, debut performance. Uh, and so it's just a matter of looking towards the future. I think the, the Derby is just kind of that the Oaks is a big ask for her from the uh, the maiden score, so... You know, you look at races like the Black Eyed Susan, the Eight Bells, the Test. You know, there's so many big races kind of in the future. So uh, she'll breeze on Saturday and kind of see how she breezes and, and, and make a plan forward from that. Um, she's nominated to all the state races around the country. Um, and she's eligible for every allowance race in the country. So um, just kind of you let the horse speak for you and you see kind of how she's how she's moving and, and going in the right direction. But. Uh, there's no doubt, you know, she was a TDN rising star on debut, and uh, those uh, those Patreon listeners and YouTube followers that uh, that heard us give us out as uh, as one of our top three year old fillies for next year were uh, were rewarded at the windows when she won first time out. All right. Also, Victor Freed, I always feel you guys give unique information. I appreciate you reviewing each horse. I am thinking Carbone. Well, this is last week's race. We'll relish. The fast track that did not happen. Actually, Carbone, that was one of your choices in that race, right, John? And what happened? Because Carbone, the odds, did the odds choice, change? Not, not my choice. Chad's maybe. I didn't like that. No, 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 no. You did pick him in your bottom neath of your exact. Oh, I did? Okay. 
Yeah, oh, that that horse went from spot. 15 to 1 down to like 5 to 1, right? He was the one horse, right? He was the one horse. The bottom line is, the bottom line is, he's a Matoli. Matolis are 1 for 11 now going a distance of more than a mile. I don't think they want to go that far. Uh, rock face. I could listen to Chad all day long. His enthusiasm for this game is infectious. You got a, you got a, a fan there, Chad. If you wait a little longer, he'll be snoring in about 15 minutes. Yeah, so. keep in mind, it is, uh, what time is it there? Uh, 11, can we start? 11, it's almost 11 p.m. I've been up since I've been up since 2.30. The American horses went to the track at 3.30 this morning watching uh, Saudi Crown and Senior Buscador and Uspa Tesoro hit the track this morning. So How about I'm that? Quite a little bit exhausted. Senor Buscador, what about his performance last week? You know, I got off a week too early. I loved him the last two times he <laughs> and I missed the boat. He's I turning mean, into race. a really good horse now. Well, he, he won $10 million on Saturday. Yeah, he's turning into a really good horse. That race set up how we thought it would with, uh, with all the speed in the world, and the horses that were last and second to last ended up first and second. There you go. All right, what about your race uh, coming up, Chad? Tell us about this uh, big race, Clapton. How's the horse uh, doing, and uh, what about the field? Yeah, so the horse that beat us uh, last time, Carbacan, the uh, the legend that is now this uh, fabled horse from uh, Kazakhstan, USA, via Russia. We were looking forward to our uh, our roommate, uh, our rematch with uh, with Ivan Drago, but uh, I guess he he saw his shadow, and so he's uh, he's gonna <laughs> skip this one. Uh, and try and be fresh for uh, for the World Cup, the twelve million dollar race instead of the five hundred thousand dollar race, and that's uh, probably a good idea. You know, he's got uh, an entire country behind him. I'd hate to see the tears that would come if he got defeated on uh, on Saturday. You have to understand so, Chad's sense of humor to to, spot, to join I, in this. I think. You mean, there's uh, a touch of sarcasm in there? Uh, just a I touch. Think, I think there's uh, look. It's a thirteen horse field. You got a couple of trainers that uh, they're they're unloading the ship against us. One who's guy's riding, five Chad? Horses. Who's riding, Clapton? Uh, a guy named William Buick. He's the, uh, oh. the first call rider for Godolphin Stables. Yeah, we Charlie know who Appleby. he is. He's won a few races uh, along the way, so we're uh, we're very optimistic that we'll get a, a a good ride. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna put the uh, post positions He's, up here on the screen so you can see it. Let me get this over there. And uh, he's currently trading in uh, in the overseas books as the uh, nine to four favorite. Not a, not a number that we often see in uh, America, John. The nine. We're to the four. favorite. We're the you know, favorite. I to, love it. Nine to four favorite. Yeah, I don't they, even know what nine to four means, but it, I'll figure. I it mean, out. it's basically just a fancy way of saying five to two, right? It's just slightly less than five to two because five a to two less than two, five right? to two. There's so. Clapton right there. So you're the number three horse. Yeah, they don't have the odds here, though. On this, no one seems to have the odds today, Greg. Yeah, that's true too. Goldstream, thank you. Uh, so there's Clapton, and uh, so twenty six runs. Uh, this would be his twenty seventh race. That's what that means, runs. Yes. Oh, nice career there. It's a long career. Looking for his sixth win of his career. Oh, he only has career. two starts for Chad, so he's a new horse man. Uh, this his fourth. Sir. This will be his fifth. Oh, is it the fourth, the third, or fourth? Yeah, we ran we ran a, a good fourth in the parking lot in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. We won the Lucas Classic. We we sat out in the Breeders' Cup Classic. We thought others could participate. We just decided to sit that race out and run awful, um, costing us one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Not that we're counting. And uh, and then we were we were third last time in the million dollar race in Dubai. So look, he's 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 run out really well for us. Um, if he's first or second in this race, he's a millionaire, which is pretty cool. And uh, if he wins, then he is in the Dubai World Cup, which is the second richest race in the world, $12 million. Wow. We get a chance to, to swing back at, at Senior Buscador and Uspa Tesoro and Derma Sadagaki, uh, the All horses right. that uh, ran against us in the Breeders' Cup. So uh, we're, 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 cautiously opti- we're cautiously optimistic. He couldn't be coming into this race any better. And I would, uh, I, I guess, insider trading here, but I would make him my uh, best bet of the year. Wow. Whoa. All Whoa. right. Well, wagering is available. At least we know that's for sure. So we'll be. Uh, Can we start? 
Are you the are you the one that's uh, got some sleeping problems? I thought Chad was the one that wants to rush. Sounds like you're the one that wants to get to bed. No, I have gambling problems. I'm betting four racetracks while we're doing this at the well, same time. Well, thanks for the honesty. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, move on and talk about uh, the only race we have right now, and that is the Gotham Stakes. And that is, of course, at Aqueduct Racetrack. That's going to be race number 10. It should go off at about 535 on Saturday, this is a mile race, three hundred thousand dollars, three year olds. Good race, because um, I recall the last few years we had some. Not sure if it was last year, but I know the last few years the Gotham has had some iffy uh, contenders. But seems to be some decent horses in this race. And um, uh, let's start first of all with uh, some of the uh, con- uh, considered morning line favorites, and just a touch. Uh, Chad's horse is the favorite at five to two. But the interesting thing, John, is that you have just to touch the favorite at five to two on the morning line, and you have a few other horses that are also pretty low priced, like uh, deterministic, deterministic. That's better. Deterministic. That's, I love uh, that horse. The number three horse uh, has only raced once. Just a touch has only raced once, and yet there are a couple of the top uh, contenders in the race. They well, made they de- deterministic three to one. No, he's nine to two. Okay, I he love that be, horse. By the way, should be twenty to one, but that's fine. Oh, anyway. twenty to one. Twenty yes. to one. Yes, he's okay. not even the best horse. He's not even the best horse in his own barn. In the he's race. only raced once. Capital Idea is a better horse than deterministic. I'm okay. sorry. Uh, All right. Well, talk about your uh, your. We'll talk about Chad's horse. Just a touch, John. What do we know? He ran once. He ran. <laughs> 10. It was a sloppy racetrack. Did he run it because of the slop? Or does, is it going to get better because it's a fast track? You don't know. It's a one-number horse. Listen, obviously, if he runs the 10, he's the horse to beat. Chad? I don't know if he's running the 10, but he probably will run. It's Cox. Why do you like Let the horse t- so much? Let me tell you what we do know, since you're talking about what we don't know. What we do know is Trainer Brad Cox has not appeared at Aqueduct in like 12 years. Okay? Right. I think the Pope might have been at Aqueduct more recently than Brad Cox. And uh, Brad Cox is going on Saturday, okay? I don't think he's going for the uh, for the dirty water dog and a Coke, right? So the fact that he's going to Aqueduct to run this horse, I know they have four in the race, but this is the one, um, shows you what the barn thinks of him. Um, I think he's the, the best horse not on the sidelines for the Brad Cox barn. And his future is ahead of him. Uh, the added distance should be of no problem. I love the... The, the stretch out to the mile instead of, you know, having to go a mile and a 16th or a mile. And it, it's funny because we, 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 we knocked the New York program going mile and eight to a mile to a mile and eight to a mile. But as a progression for, for this horse going from six furlongs to a mile is, uh, is much better. So I think the added distance will, will only benefit this horse. I think the sky is the limit. I don't think that it was a uh, wet aided racetrack that propelled him to victory. And, and the way he finished and the way he leveled off uh, to the wire um, was just really, really eye-catching. It was really appealing um, for a trainer that uh, officially, according to Equibase, won the Kentucky Derby three years ago with Mandaloon. This, that was the news of the week, is that Equibase has finally updated their chart to show that Mandaloon is now the official Kentucky yeah. Derby winner over, over Medina Spirit. Still no, no refunds. No refunds. For those I get no on. money. The, that lawsuit is now going to its third different judge. Yeah, but, you could join. You could join the uh, yeah. lawsuit if you want. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. But but, uh, but ultimately, look, this is uh, he he he's shown he's shown that he could have that. You, you don't want to use that word, the the b word, brilliant. Um, but that's what he's shown. He's shown flashes of maybe being brilliant. I know it's just the one race, um, but he's he shows he can be any kind. So. Uh, he's going to be my top selection in here. That's no surprise. Uh, obviously, with a uh, with a fourteen horse field, you have a lot of a lot of different moving parts. But I'm I'm very very high on this horse, and um, I think he's the one to beat for sure. And if you want him, uh, as I know you do, for the Kentucky Derby, now would be the right time because his odds are still in uh, pretty good shape. So, because we don't even have odds on uh, Claim Victor, right? So no, but, he would be uh, part of the field. You got to yeah. get points before you get up. Well, not necessarily. You're part no, of he, clo- he was in the Derby Future Pool this horse. He, was, he closed at 27 to 1. He actually oh. got a lot of respect after his one win. Yeah, so just a touch. If you want him, now's the time. All right, 
Uh, the other two horses that are considered the top contenders, we'll start with that deterministic uh, horse, the 9-2 shot, the three horse who ran a 12 at Saratoga first time out. John, this is the horse apparently that you like. I love this horse. I love the fact that he ran a 12 in August, which interprets to like he could run a 7 or 8 Saturday. When you run a 12 that early, that's a positive sign. It's not easy to win seven furlongs first out, and that's what he did. And uh, I don't know. Listen, obviously, the Cox horse could be any kind. I get it. But the Cox horse is going to be eight to five, just a touch. My horse will be every bit of five to one, I hope, maybe more. And that's my top pick. <clears throat> Chad, did you I wanna... just, I just, I just, I, I prefer capital idea over deterministic from a recency standpoint. Well, um, capital idea is not in the race. Oh, here he is. He's a, 40, he's a 13. Okay. Yeah, sure is. I, look, I, I just, it's it's a big ask. I know what he did first time out in Saratoga. That's fine. I just, I, I'm not I'm not sold on this horse. All right. The other 9-2 to two shot has a really nice sheet line, and that is Bergen, uh, 2017 last year. Now, he had a 12 his last time out, but we are dealing Printing. with a bounce Printing. factor here. So uh, this is the other Brad Cox uh, trained horse, John. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's like other horses. When you deal with lightly raced horses, what does one race really mean? Nothing. Horses will come out and run, and then they'll, you know, they'll move up 10 points, 10 lengths in their second start. So this horse is just getting better with each start. Last time he moved way up, was it the mud? Who knows? We don't no, know. It was the four-horse field of garbage that he faced. Okay. I, this is a hard pass for me. I don't like this horse at all. I, I don't I, like I don't, him either. He didn't make my cut. I don't think. I don't think he's he's much. He won a four-horse Jimmy Wingfield Stakes. Um, that was just not a very good race. I, I, you yeah. can have this horse. He'll take money being a stakes winner. He'll take money um, for the connections. Uh, I just the not other cock so a slight line is better than Bergen. I think take that one. You can take that one too. I understand. Well, <laughs> I just said between the two of them, I'd rather bet light line than Bergen. That's all. I'd rather I'd rather bet flight line as a second year as a stallion, oh. not having tag on, than I would rather bet light line and Bergen as a tag team. Okay. If one tag, they will end of the half mile pole. <laughs> Uh, strange reasoning. I know it's Cox, but uh, to go from six furlongs to a mile, and then back to six furlongs, and then back to a mile. They don't know what they want to do, and he's a Brad Cox Colt Group horse. He's the first. Congratulations. He's the first one of the Brad Cox Colt Group horses to win a stake race. It only took him two years. But uh, I, I just, I, I'm not sold on the horse. They, look, he wasn't good enough uh, to win before. He's, 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 just, he's, just a pl he's just a horse. I, I just, the race came up. It was a small field. They kept entering him in allowance races. The allowance race didn't go. So it just kind of ended up here as, as just kind of somewhere to go. And he won the race, and this is the next logical spot. Um, but the, it's just for me, I, I don't I don't think he's in the same class as as the 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 other Brad Cox horse. All right, there's three eight to one shots. We'll start with the seven El Grande O. We've talked about this horse before. Uh, racing in the he withers. Shouldn't be, he shouldn't be eight to one, and and the other horses are nine to two or less. I'm sorry. He, he's he's accomplished a lot more than than Bergen and Deterministic. I'm sorry. I and I understand we're talking about with a sheet number, John, on on Deterministic as a two year old, but at least El Grande. Oh, he's 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 less than a length away from being a multiple grade stakes winner and one of the top point hunters in, in the Kentucky Derby Trail. Yeah. That being said, I don't like him in this race. But oh, okay. <laughs> Well, the reason I mean, look, he's, like he's, he's, because he's got a history. He's not going to get much better. He is basically, when you have 10 starts. Yeah, that's a of, lot. Yeah, you kind of know what the horse is. So. Right, but you do know you do know that he's a pace factor, and you do know that he probably doesn't want to go a mile and an eighth. Okay, so all that is I, true. I think those those are things that are in the positive. And, he, and, he, and he's a trier. And if you're going to get 8 to 1 on him, which is a, a crazy price, um, I, I do think you can use him underneath because we, he's shown the per, the the proclivity to to to, to be around. He's yeah, he's, he's, a he's, he's 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 a he's a battler. You know, he's he's like the he's like the guy on a basketball team that does the dirty work. He gets the rebounds. He's not gonna he's not gonna put up the points, but he's gonna get the rebounds. Yeah, the only bad race he actually had result wise was that Grade One race, the Champagne. Yeah, he has. And he been... actually, he actually didn't run terrible in that race. He ran kind of sneaky, okay in that race. But he's, he's just, he's. I, I, I think Jonathan put it perfectly. He's run ten times. We have the CV on him. He is what he is at that point. 
right? What are the what was that the famous uh, NFL coach? They are who they are. Oh, that's uh, that, Dennis that El Green. Grande, yeah, El Grande O is who he is. Yeah, well, Greg, well, the odds are up, Greg. Good oh, news. Okay, 0 for 3 on fast, uh, El Grande. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Weather's going to be okay at Aqueduct? Yes. Okay. Maybe. Oh, you geez. never know. All right, uh, the other 8 to 1 horses, we've got the 11 horse Light Line. You've heard that name just a second ago. This is another Brad Cox trained horse. Um, and uh, this horse coming up in third place uh, behind El Grande O. In the grade three withers, ran a 14 in that race. John. Yeah, he is what he is. You know, another one. Listen, he only has four starts. He's never gone backwards, so he's got a shot. There's an interesting portion that is shipping in from California, this uh, John Sadler horse, Slider, who's breaking from post 12. This is another one that had fast numbers as a two-year-old somewhere in the mix, so. Yeah, Slider's actually uh, been very consistent. Every, uh, all right. five of his races are between 13 and 15. What John, about those John two? Sadler, John, John Sadler, and, and, and John, you've been following California racing he's not, for a He's long not time. a good shipping trainer. He's, he's not a very good shipper. I, I, no. do, I, I do believe that this is going to be the start of uh, many John Sadler horses shipping to the East Coast as he starts to wind down his training career. Um, I think we're going to see a, a transition. A lot of John Sadler horses being transferred into the barn of Cherie DeVoe uh, within the next six months to a year. Okay. So you don't like either of those eight to one shots, the light line or slider, Chad? I do. I like them That's... underneath. I don't like them to be uh, deterministic. Or I, I, I prefer flight line over light line, and uh, I, I don't swing at the slider. I'm gonna try and get on base, so I, I don't like slider either. I do like uh, I do like hamburger sliders though. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's take a look at some of the other horses in this field uh, that have a reasonable shot based on the odds. The, the eliminate, the nine horse, is a 15-to-1 shot coming off of 14, uh, breaking uh, his maiden last time out, but that was just a couple of weeks ago. I'd rather bet Maximus Meridius, the two horse at 20-to-1, than uh, that horse at 15-to-1. So, so, so here's the two things. On, on eliminate, the barn was very, very high on him before debut, and he disappointed many, many times. Uh, he was a big right... favorite every time till his last race. <laughs> caught the he right field last time out. Him. It was a very soft field. He did what he was supposed to do, and he, I mean, he was an easy winner, and he finally showed glimpses of putting it all together. So, I, I, I mean, it's it's back a little quick for for that barn off that race. What what did he get on the sheets in that race, John? Which one? Eliminate or 14? Eliminate, yeah. 14. 14 which is, how, how much of a career best is that? A little bit. It's, it's, I mean, uh, it, would there be a concern of a bounce, you would think? Not really. He's lightly raced. He only has four starts. But, you know, okay. listen, the Pletcher usually gets it early out of them. They don't, like, develop much. So. Yeah, look, look Max, I, I agree with John on Maximus Murders. He's going to be my second pick here. Um, and, and I love the 20-1. to 1. Look. Uh, trainer Butch Reed won this last race uh, in the Withers with Uncle Heavy, who now waits for the wood, and has this suitable replacement. Look, Maximum Mischief is a very, very good stallion. His first horses are three-year-olds now. At one point, he was the early derby favorite. Unfortunately, got hurt in Gulfstream. I think he bought a tendon uh, and had to retire early in his career. Uh, we never got to see the best of him. We never got to see a fully developed uh, Maximum Mischief. But, the the babies look good the part at the sales they've run well they've seemed to be kind of stretchy athletic types um i love this progression if you watch his replays especially the last race i know it's just an allowance race at park so it's not going to get the same uh kudos or or credentials as you know horses coming in from other places uh but he was a much the best winner that day always traveled in hand in the clear spotted the the you know some lens out wide um, and was just very willing. He did it as the rider, as the rider pleased. And uh, there's a lot to like about this horse for an, a very underrated trainer in Butch Reed, who I think does a great job and doesn't get enough accolades because he spends most of his time in parks. Um, but we've seen horses from parks win the Kentucky Derby before with John Service and Smarty Jones, and there's no reason to think that this horse can't take a big step forward. And uh, for me... Um, and normally, normally the morning line at New York is is 
pretty pretty uh, you know up to par we say john right but yeah but this morning line doesn't make any sense this horse should not be 20 to 1 at all yeah this horse should be 5 to 1 at most yeah this, so this, is, a, this does a good job this is a this is for me this is a, a huge huge overlay and and i'm gonna key on this horse in seconds and thirds i'll even t- t- you know play with him a little bit and you know on top although i think brad cox's horse is much the best but um he should not be 20 to 1. That that's that's very disrespectful, I think. Yeah, I mean when you take a look at the comparison between the 2 and the 12, Maximus has got 15 15 13. Slider has a bunch of, you know, 13 14 15s. Yeah, but one did it at Santa Anita and one did it at Park. So that's why one is 20 to 1 and one is 8 to 1. That's why. And you're also you're getting a, a big edge with the with the positions too. Slider's all the way out at 12. 12 is better than 2 at a mile, I hate to tell you. Okay. It's one turn. It's only one turn. That's you know you want to be drawn outside for the most part. Well, this is something that we should. Uh, I'd like to have like uh, create like a nice little tra- stats at mm-hmm. what what works best at inside outside positions at which tracks and at which distances. I think people would like that if you don't already have that kind of information. But it's probably right in here, of course. It's in your brain. For well, it's in your brain. brain. No, so, it's in a lot of people's brains. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think you're being modest there. Um, all right. So uh, no other log shots then in the Gotham that you uh, – Why? Maximum Meridia said 20 to 1 isn't a good enough I said no shot? other uh, long shots oh, oh, that I'm you want to take a look at? No. Okay. We, we mentioned every horse. What about place. Capital Idea? Capital, Capital Idea. Idea, the 13, is coming off a 16 Dad and a 14 first two starts. Three. That's one of the two Clement horses in the race. Chad likes him better than the three. I don't. All right. So what is your pick, John? I like the three. Deterministic and exact is with number two, Maxim Meridius, the 10, just a touch, and the 12 slider. Three with two, 10, 12, and reverse them as well. I'm glad you said reverse them because I hated to see that you're, you're winning. Streak. You've won three of these derby preps in a row on our show. I'd hate to see it end with a bad pick in the Terministic. So I'm glad you picked it. At least you reversed it. I'm definitely, I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Sometimes I'm stupid. Today I'm not so stupid. Chad? I agree, John. It's not stupid. Oh, wait. What's the, what's the question? Your pick? Yes, the 10 and... The two, uh, we know that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's it? Just the 10-2? Yeah, throw capital idea underneath. I don't know. Throw uh, El Grande. You can, yeah. you can use El Grande O underneath a little bit. That's um, pretty much what I'm doing. 10 2 7 13. 10 2 13 7 is Chad's official. Yeah, I, 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 would, I, would say, I would say this, though. I would say this, though. If uh, I think if... Uh, you take out Brad Cox's top pick for me. The other three horses that Brad Cox runs in this race, I think where they will finish in the race, if it was a blackjack hand, you'd bust. If it was what? A blackjack hand, you would bust. Oh, okay. So I think where they finish, the three positions will equal more than 21. And 21. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, you couldn't quit while you were ahead. You were doing fine. I can't. You had I, can't, I, can't I can't. Go ahead, Greg. What are your selections? I he already he took mine. It was ten, well, two, seven, thirteen. Okay, so you guys match. So yes. it's a Chad. That and means Greg. they're gonna lose. All you right, we got an entry there, Chad and Greg. Okay, let's go to Gulfstream and look at the the, the, no? the morning line favorite is uh, Doorknock. Yes, we finally get around to Doorknock again. We haven't talked about Doorknock. Uh, since, matter of fact, I think it has been since uh, that last win out uh, in the Remsen. Which Not was... true. We spoke about Doorknock when we were talking about Sierra Leone a few weeks ago. Well, I can't... You... I, now, I... Sierra, Sierra Leone was completely against the track, and Doorknock was completely with the track that day. So, I'm just when, pointing When was out. that? When, when um, Sierra Leone won the, the race in the uh, fairgrounds. You're talking about Track Phantom? No, I'm talking about Sierra Leone. <laughs> Doorknock beat Sierra Leone by a nose, but we liked Sierra Leone out of that race against Doorknock when Doorknock beat him because he was better than Doorknock even though Doorknock won the race. Are oh, you talking about the race that Doorknock so won the question at the Remsen? Okay. The question is, are you against Doorknock here? 
I am against Dorna. Look, I, I will tell you this. Uh, trainer Danny Gargan has been openly campaigning to tell everybody that the horse isn't ready to win. That this is a prep race for the next Usually race. Usually he tells everybody uh, that this is the greatest horse he's ever had, blah, 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 blah. So, okay. What kind of strategy is that? I'm going to tell you this. He is cold watering everybody. Okay. The horse is ready. The oh. horse is filled out. I've watched the horse down in Florida at Palm Meadows. He looks spectacular. Um, could not have grown better into his frame from two to three uh, than he has. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very impressed with the job that Danny Gargan has done with this horse. Um, He's, you know, kind of the, the, the winter book favorite uh, for the Kentucky Derby. Uh, and that's kind of been expounded since then. Even whether he was with the bias or not, you know, the Remsen came back and flattered the form with Sierra Leone coming back and winning the race at Fairgrounds, with Drumroll Please coming back and winning the, the race in New York. You know, it's 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 been a key race, and Dornock was the winner. Whether it was, uh, you know, rail-aided and bias-aided and speed-aided, uh, he did come back. He showed a lot. He fought hard. Uh, Jockey Louis Sias was aboard the last breeze um, and was very, very happy with what he felt underneath him. And I think that he's he's ready. And I mean, he's going to face a, a quality field. This is not a this is not a, a, a slouch bunch. This is a good this is a good group of horses. Can uh, I ask you a question, like, Chad? Chad, like Chad yes. is, Pl is Pletcher running both of them? Speakeasy and Lock? Yeah, they just they they just announced the Reverend Elliot Walden just announced that uh, Speakeasy will scratch uh, from the allowance race on Friday to run in the Fountain of Youth. With the the the, the, the concept of this one, uh, the Fountain of Youth is a point race, as you mentioned. You start you need to start getting points for the Derby. Uh, two, it's a mile and a sixteenth as opposed to the mile and an eighth uh, distance of the allowance race on Friday. And three, and I'm not sure that this was mentioned by Elliot, but I can tell you this uh, from my sources, um, Speakeasy has breezed one million times better coming out of the maiden race than he did going into it. And when he ran into it, he almost set the track record first time out at, at Gulfstream Park. So um, the barn is quietly optimistic. Um, you know, he mm -hmm. was entered as kind of a safety net for Locke because Locke's been dealing with uh, some some sickness was was forced to miss the the race in Tampa the Sam F Davis uh, due to being uh, ill he missed the work um, he seems like he's back on track and the barn's high unlocked but uh, Speakeasy has a chance to rise from the shadows and and really do some damage what is the, I, I'm curious to know what his morning line is uh, off the maiden win even though the maiden win was so sensational what is his morning two. line he's nine to two wow. Wow. The horse he beat, by the way, Victory Avenue, who's also in the race, who's a maiden, he, he's four to one. So they, how could they make him shorter than than Speakeasy? Well, if you watch, if you watch the race, um, I, I thought that you know he ran, he he had the, the little bit of the tougher trip. He was more, you know, I mean, Speakeasy kind of had things a little bit easier, more his way, and it's the respect of. Um, the Gustavo Delgado factor. This is the team that brought us Mage. Oh, last year. Isn't, any, isn't by the way, isn't Mage a full to Dorna? He, he is, yeah, yeah. But um, it's it's what have you done for us lately? Gustavo Delgado's won the Kentucky Derby a lot more recently than Todd Pletcher has. In case you're keeping track. Yeah, okay. You're right. <laughs> and Pletcher's had a lot more bullets than Gustavo Delgado had to also. So. I get it. But I will say this. I would take Speakeasy in a head-to-head -head matchup with uh, with Victory yeah. Avenue again. Yeah, okay. Me too. Okay, so there you go. Uh, door knock at 2-1 to one is, uh, by the way, the sheet line is really good. 2017, 14, 13, getting better each time out. But if he wants to play with the big boys, he needs a big step here from 13 in his last race. So we'll see if he can do that on Saturday. Then you mentioned Locked. So By the way, if you think his line is so nice, what are you going to say about Locke's line? Locke has nine <laughs> as a two-year-old. Okay. So, Locke, right? uh, yes, Locke start again, Locke start off really strong with a 13 first time out and then two nines in his last three races. Locke is a five to two shot. Who do you think goes off as the morning line, as the uh, favorite at the gate? Uh, is it going to be Dornock or Locke? I think it's a toss-up. I think it can go either way. It can go either way. I think it'll probably be locked. 
only because it's Pletcher and it's Gulfstream and it's Ortiz and everything else that goes with it. Yeah, because normally when we take a look at the sheets and we see one horse with the... I, I, originally, I loved Locke till I just heard what Chad said about him being sick and being forced to miss these races. I came in loving Locke. I'm still going to like him, and he's still going to be my top pick because of those fast numbers as a two-year-old. Remember, this horse went off favorite in the Breeders' Cup juvenile race against Fierceness. He was the favorite. So keep that in mind. Yeah, I mean, you have one horse has run two nines, and the other horse is, hasn't run anything better than a 13. And yet... But, 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 but this is the time of year... You can't have a straw on your pad. That's why it's so tough to win the Derby. And when you when you miss workouts, when you when things don't go according to plan, that's when things kind of start to unravel a little bit. And uh, maybe Locke gets back on track. I I would tend to think that maybe Locke will move forward off of this race because he's just not had the opportunity to have his screws uh, tightened as much as maybe the barn would like. All right, and then you guys mentioned Speakeasy, the number one horse, is a nine to two shot coming off that tremendous seven. First time out at Gulfstream last month. Uh, wow, that's a seven, John. We don't see much sevens to begin a career. I've seen too many of these horses go seven fifteen as opposed to going seven five. You know, the, every year they get seem to have a couple of years ago there was some mod horse that ran huge first time out. He's never come back to that anywhere near that race. They thought he was a freak. I don't know. Yeah, the horse ran exceptionally well first time out. Now's career start number two. By the way, as great as he is and as much as they thought of him, he still went off eight to one first time out. So they didn't not... like him first time. They didn't like him first time. Out. Okay, so that's the whole point. Hey, All it was sudden, Vegas State. But what him? I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is since that race, he is he's grown okay. before their eyes. The cat the the caterpillar has turned into a butterfly. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. Well, you get double the odds than the other two, so yeah. we'll see if well, that holds. Uh, the three-horse Victory Avenue is a four-to-one shot coming off also a very impressive nine to begin well, his career. We were talking about him a minute ago. The one beat him in that race. The one ran a seven, and he ran a nine. They're coming out of the same race. He went off the favorite against the one first time out. So. No, he'll be tough in the New York Red Maiden race next month. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. So you don't like Victory Avenue? Yeah, I like him in the New York Red Maiden race next month. Okay. Yeah, he's a New York Red that's running here, but he's fine. You know, right. Again, he ran a nine. The one ran a seven. Out of those top four, which one's going to drop? Which one has the, has the most likely to end up dropping a little bit odds wise? Speakeasy will be will be uh, will drop in odds. Agree with that, Chad? Drop meaning lower? They're all going to they're they're all going to be right there. So, what do you mean? They're, they're, they're someone they're, might drop to six to one. You mean go up? Look yeah. the the the. Those four horses will take the majority of the money. There, there's, there's value to be had in other horses in the race. Okay, um, that will drift up, but those, those four will be the targeted four of the real money and then the fake money of the CPUs or whatever those things are called. Well, the only other horse that has reasonable odds then is Real Macho, the four at eight to one. So what about Real Macho coming off at eleven? Just a few weeks ago, uh, in his second win of his career, Gaffleone on board was on board in that win last time out, John. Yeah, you know, I don't think he's as good as these horses, but again, he's lightly raced. Uh, Ronan Crichton, the trainer, does a terrific job with cheap horses. He finally has a good horse, so who knows? Let's see what happens. Jamaica's own. He's the number one accountant in Jamaica. Uh, yeah. Look, I think um, you, you can look at that horse in, in two different lights. So if you take things at face value, he finished up really, really well. His good races are good. His, his, his other races are okay. They're not terrible, but his good races are really good. When he broke his maiden uh, and Dean Reeves bought into him and when he, uh, when, he, when he won the allowance race last time, he, he, he really finished. He finished up very well. Now, the cynic in you can watch the replay and say that Bourne Noble, who was one of Todd Fletcher's aces in the hole uh, that they're really high on, he, he appeared to take a bobble 
um, in, in the middle of the stretch. And when he bobbled, really seems like that was when uh, Real Macho kind of exploded at the same time. So was it that Real Macho exploded, or was it that, that Born Noble maybe had some, some little issues? He hasn't breezed back since the race. They said they're just taking it easy on him, and they're still planning on, on running him in a major points race uh, coming up. But uh, I'm concerned that I haven't seen him back on the work tab, and I, I, I tend to believe the latter more than the former. Um, but the way that Tyler Gaffley owns riding right now, um, saying that he can't hit the board would probably be foolish because, I mean, we saw even at Oaklawn last week when maybe he wasn't on the best horses. He's still just racing and race out. Uh, you, you saw his name on the leaderboard there running seconds and thirds uh, in some of those big races. So uh, I, I don't think the horse can be dismissed, but he's definitely not one of my top picks. All right, and then uh, you have a jump there, double the money to merit the eight, the six horse at fifteen to one. The Safi Joseph trained horse, eighteen first time out, broke his maiden with ease as a morning line favorite, and then came back with a fifteen last time out, running third. John, to real macho. Yeah, I understand, but he's going to obviously have to improve four or five points. So I don't see it happening in career start number three. Maybe later down the road. You think he improves four or five points when he gets moved to Rick Dutro? Oh, sorry, too soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then you got the long shots. Anything, uh, can, can any of these horses hit the board? I mean, Frankie's Empire, the 20 to 1 shot, uh, the sheet line uh, has been pretty decent for a long shot. You know, he seems to be getting better each time out. The last two races were a 14 those were, those and a 13. Were, those, were, those were sprints, weren't they? Weren't those yes. sprints? Yes, yes. If you're going for a 30 to one shot, go to the nine, Dancing Groom. He's at least been the distance already. Dancing Groom. You, know you know the problem with Dancing Groom? And look, it's it's Antonio Sano. If you didn't know, he's been kidnapped twice. Uh, look, I think he ran so good in the champagne. So good. Like, yeah. I mean, he I think he finished third or fourth, wherever he finished. But he ran, he, yeah. yeah. He, he, he was like a million lengths out of the race on a, on a bias track. And everyone was was so smitten by the effort of Sierra Leone that it was lost how good Dancing Groom ran. But then Antonio Sano did a practical thing, which he never does, and didn't go to the Breeders' Cup. And when he didn't go to the Breeders' Cup, it kind of concerned me a little bit because he's a guy that loves to swing for the fences. And, and ever since then, his races have been really disappointing. We haven't seen that that kick that he showed in the Remsen. And I just, I'm concerned that maybe the Remsen was just his best day. I don't know. Well, I, I will tell you one thing. Uh, the, you don't mean the Remsen. You mean the Champagne, right? The Champagne, yeah, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I, I, it, because it was that freaking aqueduct, yeah. I, I want to call it the Remsen. But, but right. The only thing I could tell you about that, Chad, is that the, he ran a 15 that day. It was a sloppy racetrack, and he made a big jump. Maybe he liked an off track. But I will tell you, his last race, believe it or not, was a 13. So okay. it was actually two points better than that race that he ran in the Champagne, as far as numbers are concerned. Well, let me ask. Let me ask you a question, John. This, this is a, this is a good question for our viewers out there. Um, so, in a situation when a ho like, because I'm look, I it, it, I think it's well known for the the fans of our show that we're we we both pick our share of winners, but we do it very differently, right? You're very much. A sheet guy, you've been a sheet guy for years. I'm I'm more of a visual guy, right? Right. When when a sheet number is better than the visual performance, is that a sneaky like a sneaky like maybe I gotta look at this this race again because the number was better than it looked? Or do I do I have uh, sit there and I, I I go down with the ship and I say, Well my eyes say the race wasn't that good. What in, in your years of, of doing this, how do you how do you find that? I'm a numbers guy, so obvious. I don't have that much faith in my visual. Okay. You know, but you love your visuals, so you think you know you in your mind, which is right and not wrong. If you like something, then you you know. Like like, like here, let me give an example the the opposite way, right? A horse that we were a big fan of was First Mission, okay? And he won, and visually you're like, well, he overcame some trouble. Not all of us. Were, excuse me. Excuse me. Everybody, no, 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 no. I, I the I, numbers, I, he was not that fast. If that's, that was right, so that was my point. So, right. so his race came back with like a fit that was the allowance race, like a 15 and a half or 16. Right when he came back in the Clark and took all the money, everyone said, Oh, well, you know, he's 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 sitting on go. And you go, Well, look, he ran a 15, and guess what? 
He wasn't able to, to, to win that day. He wasn't able to win the Pegasus. He looks like he's a 15 kind of horse. So, so sometimes it works out. And you right. answered the question yourself. No, no, no. But, but yeah. so what I'm saying is, so when, when, when that was the opposite way, where visually looked better than the number gave him, and the number, the number came out true. Right. So in the opposite way, when maybe visually didn't look good to me, but the number's better than I would have thought, that maybe I do have to give it a second thought. That's I, 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 like I said, just kind of speaking through. Look, when 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 we handicap races and we look at things, because we don't talk about this beforehand, right? There's no, there's no, no we don't show. We don't have a production <laughs> meeting. Uh, you know, we have three minutes of Greg yelling at us about not paying attention. But right. other and than we, that, we, there's we wing it for the most right. part. So, but so, let, so, let me so, explain so, to you the problem, Chad. This is really mm -hmm. the problem in a nutshell. Everybody has an ego. So you're going to watch a race, and you're going to, and psychologically, if you like, if a person likes a horse, they're always going to have an excuse if a horse <laughs> has run well. Oh, the numbers wrong, or oh, they had right, trouble. Right, right, right. Or this right. or that. And so psychologically, you're never going to give up on that horse until you lose <laughs> enough money where you say, that's it, I wash my hands. But and then he wins the next start. And then he wins the next Exactly. Start. And then you shoot yourself. <laughs> and, and, and that's it. But for the most part, that's the problem. Everyone has an ego. Everyone has a bias. So if you like a horse and he doesn't run well, even though the whole world sees he didn't run well, in your mind, not you per se, but a person's mind, they will say that race was really much better than it was when it really but, isn't. It's hard but, to take uh, to take a step back. Let me explain to you something. Len Raggison, who who founded the Sheets, he would never gamble. Where the the competitor Jerry Brown, that guy is a gambler. So Raggison said that I can't make true numbers if I gamble because I will always have a bias to think okay. that. And that that was his theory, and that's why his numbers. And I, obviously, I, I, I'm biased to his numbers as opposed to the co competition. But that's why he was a success because he made the numbers, but he never gambled because he didn't want to get caught in a trap that we just talked about, where you would have a bias. Because if I liked the horse and I expected him to run a ten, well, I got to give him that ten. Where he said, <laughs> "Yeah, that's just human nature, and that's that's mm -hmm. really the way it goes." But it's not like that. I think I think that's important. I think I yeah, think well, that's, so that's I important. Thought, I think I gave a pretty good explanation, but yeah, whatever. Well, bottom line is, uh, you guys have been in the industry long enough, and 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 I've talked about this on other shows, handicapping football and so forth. And that, the fact is, is that whatever your system is, whatever your belief is. The one thing it. that you you always stick to it. That's it. Right. You got to stick to it a hundred percent of the time. Eh, maybe you deviate one percent, but you stick to it about ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. yeah. Listen, I, I'm not stupid. If I if I know how to read Chad, if Chad loves a horse and he doesn't look good on the sheets, I'm not stupid. I'm going to throw the horse in out of respect to Chad. He's been around long enough to know what he's looking at. Numbers are numbers, and to me, they're the most important thing. But I'm not stupid enough to throw out an opinion of someone, uh, of someone that has an opinion that I respect, even if the oh. number isn't there. Big deal. I'm throwing in another horse. What does it mean? You, you have know, to you be able to be flexible. To be a success in this game, you have to be flexible. That's all. I, I, I think the thing is, for me, the numbers establish a baseline. Right. But when you're talking about especially when we're talking about these young three year olds that, as you know, the numbers can can really just. That's why I tell you what does one race mean? Like one, race one race means ride. nothing. One race means zero. Look at every sheet. You'll see a horse go 15, 10. You'll see like, horses improve. I mean, right. not, you know, I'd rather bet 10,000 claimers that have 30 lifetime starts than to bet these ridiculous races. Because well, I don't know. Look, especially. I, especially Especially with you, and you've been a big you 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 banged the drum on this for two years. You know when these horses ran one race with Lasix, and now they're running without Lasix. It's it's a, it, whether you want to talk about it or not, whether whether you want to talk about it from from any different standpoint, from from a strictly handicapping perspective, it, we've seen the data has proved out over the last two years that horses that run on Lasix and then don't run on Lasix, their number does tend to go up. I mean it, it's it that's. That's a fact, Jack. There, there's no denying that that for whatever reason that that's happening. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. People make a living just waiting for those races when horses go back on Lasix as opposed to when they come off of Lasix, 
And a lot of times a horse will run on Lasix and put in a great performance. Then they'll come back in three weeks without Lasix and people are betting them off of that performance uh -huh. that he uh -huh. ran with Lasix. And I know, and you know, and anyone that's looking at this knows that they're not going to repeat that race without being on Lasix. It happens, obviously, on occasion, but in the long run, it's a losing proposition. All right. Good conversation, gentlemen. Let's go with picks for the Gulfstream Fountain of U three-year-old Kentucky Derby prep race. John? I got to go with locked. Eight over one, three, five. Reverse it small. Only because he may be sick. But whatever, Chad. Scared me off. Sean's going with locked. Chad's going to go with? Um, door knock? I'm going to. I'm no. gonna go with door knock, and I'm gonna play um, the other Todd uh, underneath. Five. The other Todd is not the eight. Oh, the one you like five one. Yeah. Okay. Greg? And I'm gonna take door knock with two long shots. I'm going with six and seven. Five with six. Seven. So we're all over the board. All right, boys. See you next week. Thank you. All right, so uh, Matt, good luck Saturday, man. Kick ass, knock them dead. We're rooting for you and betting on you. So let's go. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yes, and sir. again, that's uh, post time, uh, Chad. Nine thirty uh, East time, he said. Nine thirty. Six twenty. No, nine twenty. Nine twenty. Six twenty. Six twenty. Out here in the desert. Okay, so nine twenty Eastern in the morning. That's Saturday morning, and uh, and then don't forget, we'll be back. Uh, and, and you you are coming back, or you might come back, Chad. No, well, I'm, if he's invited to the twenty. When he's invited to the twenty million dollar, you're not going to stay there a month, are you, Chad? No, no, I come. I come back on Sunday. Okay. I gotta go. Uh, go, go see our horses in New York, and and uh, see the horse that was so eloquently named after uh, myself and 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 Jonathan's son, two tons of fun, who will make his debut on Thursday. How oh. is he? He's very well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, next week, if there's not a cancellation, Santa Anita's got the big races, including the grade one Beholder Mile. Mm -hmm. But uh, it doesn't look like uh, there are any big three-year-old races next week. Well, it's getting closer to the Derby. There'll be 100 pointers coming up soon. Hundred Oh, wait, you do have the Tampa Bay Derby. Does that count? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely, it counts. You have the, the 99 to 1 in the future wager, no more time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so there you go. So we'll have Santa Anita, we'll have uh, the Tampa Bay Derby, and maybe a few others to talk about. Guys, appreciate it. And, yes, absolutely, best of luck with Clapton. And uh, uh, go get him, Chad. We'll talk to you next week when you return home. Thanks, yes. everybody. Be well. Stay safe. All right. All right. That's, that is going to wrap it up. See you later, gentlemen. And let me just wrap up the picks. So uh, race number 10 at Aqueduct, the – uh, Gotham Stakes, John is going to go with the three. Deterministic, coming off a 12 in his first career start, along with the two, 10, and 12. That's Maximus Meridius. Yeah, so the long shot, Maximus Meridius. Uh, the 10, just a touch. That's Ched's, uh, one of Ched's early derby horses. And the 12, Salida, uh, the John Sadler trained horse. And reverse. Uh which I think is just common knowledge. Reverse, you got to box everything, aren't you? Uh, let's then go with Chad, and his pick is going to be just a touch. Big surprise, along with two seven thirteen, and uh, pretty much that's what I was doing. Um, I thought Chad had stopped at ten two, but then he went ahead and he goes, "Well, uh, I think he said the thirteen first capital idea, and then he said the the seven El Grande O." And he was like, wait a second, he's taking all my horses now. So that's, I don't, you know, jinx, you know, the whole idea when uh, that happens. So uh, fingers crossed that we're not jinxed there. And then, because to tell you the truth, I don't think I've ever remember a race where I have had the same exact picks as either John or Chad in four, in four. You can have one or two or maybe three, but I don't ever recall four. Uh, and then what we just talked about, of course, the Fountain of Youth. And uh, John is going with the eight locked, the five to two shot. That's the Pletcher horse. Uh, first race, by the way, since November, since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile race. And he's going over one, three, five, reverse. And let's see. Yeah, those are all, I think, yeah, I think those are all uh, th uh, four of the top horses in the race. So not a lot of money to be made in race number 14 for John. But um, 
it all depends. Because one of those horses could end up five or six to one. You never know. Uh, Chad, meanwhile, is going to go five over a one. So he's going to go door knock over speakeasy. And I'm taking the two long shots. And, and I'll just give you my reasoning. Not that anybody probably cares. But the reason I'm going to do five over six, seven is because I'm going to say, well, um, you know, we don't know what to expect really from two horses that have only raced once. So I'm going to try to throw those two out. And those are two of the favorites. Uh, as Chad said, locked, you never know health-wise. Okay, so maybe there's a health issue there. So you know, you don't know, but maybe there is. So I'm knocking that horse out. So that's why door knock. I was going to be my top pick anyway. So door knock. All right, so I can get rid of those three favorites, other top contenders for those reasons. Then I'll, I'm not taking a look at any of the major long shots either. But Real Macho coming off an 11. So to me, that's a bounce, okay? And it's interesting because the horse was 26 to 1 in that race. Now he's 8 to 1. And the previous races, where his odds were much better, uh, he did have one win. But, I mean, the numbers were 2016 and 18. So I would expect a bounce from Real Macho, which is why I've eliminated him. And then the only other two horses left that I didn't take are the two 30 to 1 shots, the 2 and the 9. So that's why I'm going with Merritt and Frankie's Empire, because their sheet lines are headed this way, good, the good way. Uh, and I've got door knock in there. So that's my reasoning, um, but um, I, I, you know, it's it's to, to see one of those two long shots come in with uh, into the race uh, for me and to hit the one out of the four, probably not going to happen. I get that, but uh, it is what it is. And that, those are my picks. Those are John's picks. Those are Chad's picks. And we will be back next week, as I mentioned, and every week. We also want to remind everybody, if you're still listening, not only to check out Chad's uh, horse Clapton uh, nine. 20 eastern time and i forgot to ask if it was televised because it was televised last week on fox i believe so uh check that out but uh youtube has it so you'll be able to watch it and uh and then also obviously next week is next week but oh yeah you know what i wanted to take a look at uh after next week let's see that would be the ninth so is that when everything really cooks let's see well, no, nah, not really. You got the Whitmore, but that's not even a three-year-old race. So, no, nah, not really. Tell you the truth, the, the the week after next week is going to be slower than next week. But it's the 23rd. I think that's it, right? The 23rd, yes. So, we got just a few more weeks because once we get to the 23rd, that's when we have the Louisiana Derby that and the Jeff Ruby Stakes. Uh, so, those two kick in. And then all of a sudden, you know what it is. It's Florida Derby time and Arkansas Derby time and so forth. So we're getting there. It's uh, It should be uh, really interesting and fun. And we're going to be here every step of the way. Uh, and uh, we didn't really have any other uh, picks to go on to today, especially from a very crowded uh, Gulfstream day because the odds didn't come out until we were on the air. So nothing we could do about it. But... Uh, at least we have the bonus of talking about Chad's big race tomorrow. So um, remember, you are not going to be able to uh, check us out and watch all of our videos, all 100% of every minute of the videos every week uh, on Thursdays unless you subscribe to our Patreon. And the link is in the description area. It's $5 a month. That's it. No strings attached. If you aren't satisfied, you just cancel and you're out five bucks. So I think we do a pretty good job uh, that uh, $5 a month is not a bad idea. And it's not just the picks either. Keep in mind that some of the analysis, like you just heard and saw, really cool analysis. Some of that stuff is not available on YouTube. And so you don't know whenever we're not going to make that available on YouTube. Not every single... Now, I, I will tell you that if and when, I'll be optimistic, when our subscriber base gets over a 1,000 on YouTube, okay? When that happens, I don't know when. could be a couple of years from now at this pace. But if we get over a 1,000, we will... Move everything permanently over to YouTube, okay? But that's why, until then, we're still making this the only way on Patreon for you to be able to watch every single uh, minute of our videos. 
and get them on Thursday as well. So, um, you know, we might go through a stretch for a few weeks where we provide everything on YouTube on Friday night, Saturday, but then we might go a week or two and we don't provide anything. So just keep that in mind. It's, it's, uh, just, you know, just depends on the week. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Uh, it just is what it is. And, uh, anyway, I just can't wait. It's gonna be a really fun few months, uh, all, all the way through till the Kentucky Derby. And then, uh, we'll start all over again with another big run through the Breeders' Cup. So, uh, thanks to the big boys, John and Chad for joining us here as always. And, uh, thanks to you guys for watching. We'll see you next week.